Hello, and God bless you. This is Ellen Mongan, and welcome to Wow Mom. Today we have a guest, and I'm so excited because it's going to be about getting away with the Lord and going somewhere to rest and relax and retreat. And that is what I like to do. I wear my little safari hat today and my little safari jacket because, you know, it's essential that you take time away. You don't have to wear a safari hat. <laughs> you don't have to wear the costume. But to me, it just put me in the mindset today to think about retreat. You see, I just got back from retreat over in Flat Rock Mountain. So I like the idea of getting in nature and going away either by yourself or with your husband or maybe with the family. So I'm going to introduce our guest and she's going to tell us all about it. And let's see what you think about Tammy, our guest. So Tammy, I read your bio and I'm just so thankful that I took it off Catholic Mom and it was succinct because my strong point is, is talking. My weak point is reading. So here we go. Tammy Kaiser is a, is that how you pronounce it? Tammy Kaiser, is that right? Is a mother and wife, yes. a teacher, an author, and a speaker. She runs a video production studio featuring Catholic speakers. These get purchased on view or viewed on form. A lot of y'all have that for your church. She also is a co-owner and host of the new Catholic Retreat Center and Cultural Center in Carolina Mountains called Heartridge. She has taught everything from NFP. Zumba, which is my favorite, cleaning toilets, not in Catholic, <laughs> the hula, ballet, journaling, tap, dance, and liturgical living. So here's Tammy, and welcome, Tammy, to the show. I'm taking off my glasses, so I really can't see you. <laughs> no, just How are you doing today, Tammy? It's so good to see you. Well, I'm keeping mine on so I can see you, Ellen. Pardon? I'm the same way. I've got to have my glasses on. So. Yeah, but I don't have to read anything else. So I can just be Tammy. right. Tammy's a great, a great example of a Proverbs 31 woman. So Tammy, tell us a little more about your bio because that was a short form. Oh, Ellen, I don't even know where to start. So um, the long and short of it, you know, um, I'm a Catholic convert. So that's very interesting. I had that interesting journey of faith. Um, when I was getting, when I got married to my husband, he was going to be a Presbyterian minister. And I had it set in my mind at that time that I would be the wife of a pastor and we would raise a family and I would take care of the women's ministries in the church and he would be the pastor there and, you know, on a, some quaint little country church or something like that. But um, God really touched our hearts with the truth of the Catholic church. So, you know, um, we converted and that's a whole other story issue in itself too. what brought us into the church. But um, from then on, it was kind of just crazy. My husband had been a religion major in college. So when he converted to Catholicism, you know, he couldn't be a priest because we had been married. And so we were kind of just sort of lost and unemployed. We had been very strong in, in youth ministry in the Presbyterian church. So that is sort of where our ministry began in the Catholic church is in youth ministry. And at that time, you know, we're talking, oh, I don't want to do the math, you know, 25, 30 years ago, um, youth ministry in the Catholic church wasn't much, you know, so we kind of brought this idea of a youth program into the Catholic church. And so my husband and I served as youth ministers and we embraced the teaching of the church of being open to life. And so we started having a lot of children. And um, I really saw my role at that time just to be a mom. And I was very happy to, to be a stay-at-home mom. And um, my husband, <laughs> we were having trouble. This is what it is lately. You can't feed a family as a youth minister in the Catholic church, especially a long time ago. So <laughs> we were, we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. And we had the feed up van that we had because we had had to move out of the car because we had so many kids and we couldn't afford a bigger vehicle. Someone gave us their old minivan. And I mean, it was just like, we were just really were learning to depend on God at this point financially because we didn't, honestly, we, we couldn't make ends meet doing that. And so my husband went back to school and we got involved at, in the start of a school a nice little Catholic school in the Pittsburgh area called Aquinas Academy. This is a long bio, <laughs> bio Ellen, I have, to, but this is where it started. And I know some of your questions talk about being in ministry as a couple. So this is sort of where we started. This is um, so important. But anyway, so he got into education. 
Yeah, we got into education and was the headmaster eventually of this Catholic school. So he went back to school, got his master's and um, all along, you know, I was at home with the kids and we did some homeschooling. Um, we felt called to this other Catholic school in South Carolina and that's how we got to South Carolina. There was an opening and the school that we were in in Pittsburgh was mostly elementary, but you know, our heart was really in youth ministry back to those days when we were doing ministry together as youth ministers. And when the school, a high school needed a headmaster, we were very interested. And the name of the school was St. Joseph's. And we had been praying to St. Joseph all along for this provision for our family. And we really think that he brought us to this school here in Greenville, South Carolina called St. Joseph's. And so he started, you know, as, as this headmaster of this Catholic school. And, and um, I continued, you know, staying at home with the kids. And my kids eventually went to this St. Joseph's Catholic school. And um, I have, you know, we had eight of our kids graduate from there. I have a senior there right now. And my daughter is not old enough to go there yet. So I have a nine-year-old daughter at home. So in case you're doing the math, that's eight children plus two, that's 10 children in all. And currently five are married and we have another one that's getting married um, this fall. So anyway, so now we're in Greenville, South Carolina working at this Catholic school. And my husband and I have sort of gone different paths. Like you spoke a little bit about what my ministry is with the, the videos and I had a ministry, this is, I'm going through all your questions for you, Alan. Well, it's just I, know, I just, the, you have the the I just said we parallel so much, Sammy. We <laughs> no. parallel so much. I, we do. We parallel so much. Uh, yeah. And it's, our it's, children. And my late life child is a lot less yeah. you know, than yours. But, you know, Zachary, you know, so I'm going to take my hat off so I can hear better because now I'm thinking <laughs> the expensive feeling, looking goofy. That was the prop. We're going because after a while, I had to yeah, shed that hat. So go ahead, Tammy. Okay. So, well, no, I was just saying. Um, so, um, let's see. So I started a ministry for moms and, and wives, and it was called Smart Martha. Okay, so that's that Mary Martha ministry. I, I really felt I'm really a Martha at heart. I just am busy, busy, busy. I, I don't take time to pray. And I really see, um, you know, I saw this is a message for me personally, but then I see a lot of women and moms who need her that message too. And the best way for me to be reminded of that was to talk about and try to teach other people so you know I wasn't always teaching by example because you know, I still struggle with that so much but um but but God gave me that ministry to women and so I I traveled and I spoke I wrote a book um and that was just kind of a fun thing for me to do in ministry but with my husband at this growing Catholic school having all the kids it's just you know it's just very difficult to balance that time um you know my husband's work was very very demanding and um and i was trying to homeschool and so and trying to run a ministry and so it, it was hard especially my ministries thank god that it was a ministry about being a good mom and being present to your children and stuff like that otherwise i might have just got swept away in it but you know every time i would be giving these talks and so on i was constantly reminded about right. how important that is to be present to our children present to what we're doing present to where God is is with us in this moment that's right you know and tell me um, this Tammy is your book still different? you know book, in your, your book... kitchen you need to sit down and talk to them yes is your book still pretty you want to tell them about so your, anyway your so so I started this business and, then, and yeah well the book was called hold on I'm I know my and you'll see why my internet is so bad when I Finish this right okay. um, and where I am right now. Okay. Well, so I thought, well, you know, instead of traveling everywhere, because that's so hard on the family, sure. that maybe I could start doing videos. And that's that was just when this was starting to be a new thing. Um, you're one of the first to have I a, feel. You buy you a DVD right. of a program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. You and so I I thought, well. You know, instead of me traveling everywhere and doing it over and over again, I would just produce a program and and yeah. and you know, and I never ever produced that smart Martha video that I was hoping, you know, women's and moms groups would buy and and use with their groups. But instead, I discovered that 
there's a lot of other great Catholic mom, Catholic women speakers. And that's where I met you, Ellen. I, I, you, you did a presentation for me. So I recorded it and offered it as one of these presentations so that um, busy moms could attend like a conference while they're at home. And this is common now because we've all done it in COVID. You know, we had all these conferences the that everybody's been doing. Yeah, I was way ahead of the game. And then what's funny when COVID came, I was kind of, I was out of it. So I didn't do anything during COVID and everybody else sort of took over and they did. There's was really some wonderful conferences out there and so many opportunities to see all these speakers. And so, so I, I did some, so I, I sort of was, like I said, I was sort of ahead of all of that. And I did produce all these videos and, and made that accessible for moms and for women's groups. And, and, you know, I, I just really am about trying to get people together and, and to share their lives together, to build community. And, and, but, and my husband, he's doing his own thing too. He's doing wonderful things at this Catholic school that he works at. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we, we kind of were going our own separate ways, doing God's work and which was good, but we really desired to be, um, you know, work together again. And so, um, in the midst of everything, so life is just, everybody's been in this situation. You're just, and, and I'm in it all the time, I know. We're just overwhelmed. It's so chaotic. We just feel like we have so many things to do. But my husband felt like that at his job. And I felt like that while I was doing all these ministries. And then, and then we all have crises with our kids. I mean, I do not have perfect kids whatsoever you know i've never written that parent book yet <laughs> and, and, and we all do that so we live in real life we live take in up a lot of the time there's no perfect family mm -hmm. yeah so it just is a time thing and so we were both feeling so stressed and 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 god provided this little cabin I it was a trailer it. ellen but it was oh. in the mountains in north carolina this little cabin and my husband and i and we bought it um, you know, we don't have, still don't have tons of money, but we bought this little piece of paradise, we called it, and this little trailer in the mountain. It's like a little cabin. And we would go to this cabin just to get away from the world. And we would be able to enter into prayer. We'd be able to, to leave, you know, our busy world behind and, and take time to read. Like who has time to sit and read? But we would do that at this cabin. And we would spend hours together just talking with one another. So it was, it was a, it, it, it saved our careers. It saved our marriage, saved our, our physical being. Cause we start to feel the stress, you know, how that plays out on your body too. And, and we would invite our kids, you know, our grown kids to the cabin and they would spend time with us. So this cabin became a refuge for us. That's right. And then we had the idea, we would like to share this with others. We would like others to be able to take time away from their busy lives and go on a retreat. And so we thought, well, maybe we could add a place to this little mountain that we had now, you know, let's look at building another building that people could come and stay at. And we looked at nearby properties. And so God sent us on this journey for almost a year and a half where we would go to a, a retreat place or possible retreat place. So some of these places were really run down. Some we would like travel like up and up a mountain, up, 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 you know, and we would finally find a place where like, no, no one can drive here. Um, some of the houses were falling apart. Some are just filled with all kinds of antiques and stuff. Like we found this farm somewhere, all of these places. And we, every time we went, you know, we'd be praying for a sign and we'd think we'd see a sign, but we weren't sure. We would look into buying these places and sometimes we'd put an offer out. And then one time we were in an offer for a place and it looked like we needed to borrow a lot more money to do stuff with it, to make it usable for people to come. And so I went onto the computer and what you do to find what your mortgage payment would be is you'd go to a site that find your mortgage payment. So I went to this site online and I typed in the numbers and then on the bottom, they had an advertisement for this other place. And I'm like, oh, you know how the, it was just another realtor place. And they were advertising this place. I'm like, wow, that place looks really good. It looks really perfect. So um, I pulled it up. I looked and I'm like, oh my gosh. And, you know, we were in contract with this other place. I said, no, this looks like the place we need to see. And so um, we went to see it and, and, and we loved it. It was 
we were able to, I don't want to say it's re, it was reasonably priced because we were able to borrow, you know, with our life savings, our mortgage, with everything we've thrown into this, we were able to talk a bank into lending us money for this place. And so we bought it. And it's, it's this former Baptist um, reform school for girls. Mm -hmm. And it had been closed for two or three years. And prior to that, it had been run down and went out of business. And a couple other businesses who did similar reform, this is Baptist, pretty fundamentalist stuff, um, had looked at it and um, had moved their stuff here. So I can just tell you, I mean, we've come so far, but the place was such a mess and just full and full of stuff from the other people who had come and bought it. I mean, you talk about, you had that nice safari hat. We had over a dozen cowboy hats here. There are over 500 work gloves here. There is I, hundreds of King James New Testament Bibles here. I mean, just tons and tons of stuff that, um, you know, and, and when we first bought the place, of course, the power had been turned off because there's all kinds of back taxes. And this, I'll, I'll tell this story and then I'll let you ask me some more questions. No, no, but, I like this. Um, I didn't know the story, but I love the pictures. I'm going in just for the pictures. <laughs> the pictures yeah, no, so, yeah, so it's, it's kind of cool. So, so this is in, this is January and it's, it's cold and there's no power here. So it's very dark and, you know, January is kind of dark anyway. Um, and we're wandering around the place and, and every time, like, this was like maybe in our third visit. And every time we'd come, we would discover another building or another room or someplace that we didn't even know was here. Nice. And we're opening doors and they're full of junk. And of course there's spiders, there's snakes, there's like everything going on here. And we just have like our little phone flashlights, you know, so we're looking in different buildings and stuff like this. And we opened up a couple doors to get into this one building, no windows, very dark. We pull up our flashlight and you know what we saw? A statue of Saint Joseph. Oh, something. A really statue of Saint Joseph. Yeah, isn't that? I mean, that is amazing because, That's as you know, well, you know, like I said before, he's our, he's our, our, he's one of our patrons. He's the guy who helps us in our financial situations. He's the real estate guy. Yes, the you know, when you're looking for a house or something like that, you're praying to Saint Joseph. Of course, so we've been, you know, asking Saint Joseph's help all along. And then we go into this and the room is full of junk and we see like this outline statue and it's a pretty decent, I'd say it's about four foot high statue of, of, a, of a man. And we look and like, oh my gosh, it's St. Joseph. I can't believe it. And what's amazing is like, if this was an old church or something like that, that would be, you know, maybe normal, but this is a Baptist fundamental place. So that's just so odd that they had it here. It ended up later when we got the lights on and we were able to see that um, it is actually a St. Joseph from a larger nativity. Wow. You know? So that's why the St. No Joseph. Cool, though, but so. for us, we took it as a sign. And then, and then the other sign too um, is that we closed on March 19th. And of course, when you set your closing date, you have no power on that. So it's not like, oh, we get to pick the date. No, that's all in the hand of the lawyers, the other people. They sat that all up and it March 19th, which is St. Joseph Feast Day. So we just, we, we've had continuous signs like that throughout this whole thing. And, and I'm sitting at the retreat place now. This is my office here and I'm in the mountains and really bad, slow internet. Um, a lot of phone calls are really hard. You know, it's hard to get a phone signal here. You've got to go up in some of the other pieces of the property to get a phone call, but it really is the perfect place for, um, for a retreat, and and we named it Heart Ridge after um, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Oh, so nice! I, mean, I tell my because friends we about were it. following our heart's desire. We we felt like yeah, we felt like we were following our heart's desire, um, and and of course you know the whole our hearts are restless until they rest in, in Jesus, and we we've, we've all experienced that restless of heart, like we we're we're searching that we we want something, and and we want this place to represent that sacred heart of jesus you know this is where you're going to find rest rest in him and so you think, tammy as a mother of many that's part of the story anyway can you hear me i don't know if you can hear me so don't you think as a mother of many like we both have a large family and then we have we add to son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws and grandbabies and we end up like filling up a whole church you know but the truth is 
that you need time alone right. more than most people that have like just two children. I mean, I feel like, I mean, if you have two children, God bless you, but the mothers of large families, just like Jesus had 12 children, pretty much just raising the disciples to teach and to preach. He didn't take time alone. So many times he stepped back. You know, I have to step back. Even when I had the children, Tammy, I wasn't skilled in motherhood like you were with Proverbs 31, the whole 31, and also the Martha. I was the Mary, so I would have to pray in order to do. I really did. Uh -huh. So I just admired that. We talked about this yesterday with, I was with Allison Gingrich for a little thing. We talked about Mary and Martha, and, but you do need to step back. I don't know how people hear God, to be honest. If they don't take a pause. I was on retreat with the sister. One thing I said is, we pray for each other. Let's take a pause. Like, ooh, let's quiet our souls. And then listen, because, you know, we're all thinking a bunch of, especially a lot of kids, I'm thinking a lot of thoughts when my kids were little. And you have to pause to hear God better. Be still and know that I'm gone. But it's just so important. I can't live my life any other way. Tammy, so I'm glad for your witness. Because there may be some mothers out there, right, that are really, really tired. And Tammy can help you. You can go and she's going to invite you in a minute and tell you there's more to come. But I'm saying that invite you. In. Why would you go? You go to hear God and to be taught by a, a woman of wisdom, a problem, 31 woman. So Tammy, you got to the place and St. Joseph's there and I'm all about signs. We were just talking about this day in our prayer time. Miracles happen, yeah. but no one sees them. You saw it was a small whisper from God. So tell us how, um, like, why would someone even go? That's our best part of the show. It's going to be our hard. I have a million questions though, but I always try to keep it to 30 or 45 minutes, but I can't see, so I can't tell what we've been on. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that, why they should come and so I'm going to see what our time is. You'll complain. I think the longer it is, I like it better. So we, as you get into it, it's even better a show. So tell me about um, how, right. how and why they would go, because I want to go so bad. We actually attempt it. Where is it located? Because we were at Flat Rock. We were at the okay. Gulf of Rye. We were just sure. at Flat Rock. Carl's, Sanders, we did the hike. So right. how close are we um, to there? So we're not, yeah, we're not far from there. We are, um, it's it's close to the border of North Carolina. Carolina. We're in that upper corner of South Carolina. Nice. And, and we're kind of at the at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So okay. um, uh, you know, if you're coming from north, you'll go over the mountains to get to us. If you're coming from the south, you're just riding right up into the mountains and, and you'll be near us. We're in a beautiful valley. We're on the edge of what's called the Jocassi Gorges Wilderness. And according to National Geographic, it's one of the like last wilderness, un, untouched wildernesses in the in the in the world. Some of the, one of the greatest ones. So there's like tons of like wilderness forests, and then there's two really awesome state parks nearby. And this part of Carolinas too is the highest concentration of waterfalls as well. So there's all these gorgeous waterfalls. So is, we're in the middle of all of that. Um, it kind of we have a nice little waterfall here. Okay. We so, have, uh, um, I'm oh, sorry. That's right. It's close to Greenville too, because I know you you, I'm not, I'm geography challenged as well. Oh yeah. Greenville, close to Greenville. See, so there's a landmark. No, no, that's fine. I know I'm trying to think the best way. So I'm, I'm saying upper left corner, South Carolina, right? So we are an hour from Greenville, South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, and maybe an hour from Asheville, mm -hmm. two hours from Charlotte. Thanks. So, um, you know, it's, it's not too far. And, and, what one of the ministries that my husband and I really feel strongly about doing, you know, you, you talk about, well, we do want time away for people. And I can tell you, um, <laughs> no offense, you know, we have um, Airbnb <laughs> properties here. Yeah, the, so we have the Airbnb <laughs> properties here. We are just starting to have um, single rooms available for people to just come and rent. Um, of course, we've had a lot of church women's groups. They've come on retreat already. We've just been open in April. I know but I one of the that. ministries that we're all starting that I think your that your families would really be interested in is that we are doing family camps. That's so this, this is time for the whole family to retreat away together. And of course, it's not like quiet and prayer when you're with the family. I mean, it is to a certain extent because we do have those wonderful times together. But we're talking about lots of games or kayaking. We have a zip line. So it's, it's this wonderful opportunity for families to come together. And I, I tell you, we had three week long sessions this summer and the response was overwhelming. The, the families, they loved it. I mean, it was just an opportunity to come together. There's mass every day. 
Um, we have a chapel, so you can always get away here and pray at this little chapel that's here. It's just really good fun with the family. And then you have that advantage of meeting other families too. So we have time. We have time when you do some um, work with just your family and we give them some questions and some little activities to do with their family. But we also have time that you can be with your peers. Mm -hmm. um, so the adults hang out with the other adults and, and talk about, about life and, and issues and encourage one another. And just the, the bonding that occurred between these adults on these summer camps was just amazing in this amount of time. And then of course, um, we offer a date night. So we encourage couples to spend, you know, time together. And so we would see the couples, you know, on the other side of the lake, we have a lake. So they're sitting on the other side of the lake and one of our swings over there, just hanging out together while we're, we're watching the kids in the gym for them. And so it's just kind of those aspects of your life that you need to, to work on. Um, and the most important relationship, your relationship with God. So this whole thing centered around God, like we have morning prayer and evening prayer and, um, it's just it's just a really beautiful time. Our theme this year, and this is kind of pithy, but the theme was there is no spot where God is not. Oh, I like it. I so like of course it. we had a theme song, and so all the kids are singing this theme song all the time. And um, and you know what an important message for everybody to remember. You know there is no spot where God is not. And next year we'll we're gonna have five weeks for families. And we had families from all over the place. Um, very few came close, mostly. Well, we had some from Charlotte, but we had from Florida, from Ohio, Vermont, Louisiana, Kansas. They all came to this camp. And so that was kind of fun having this representative of Catholic families from all over the United States. So that was another minute. And, and so my husband and I are, are running this program. And we have interns that we're training that help us out with the camp. So that's a whole other ministry as well. So if you have young they, adults who they. are bored in the summer, yeah, like college age students who want something really substantial to do over the summer, um, it's a great opportunity because they build a community and a community that prays together, but also works together and, and ministers to these families and these kids. So that was a beautiful um, ministry that came out of this as well. I have a lot of questions, but one thing I want to say so is lots of stuff. Ella. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I want to say is that I watched it from the bottom up, not as well as you did right there. You know, I watched it as a fly on the wall, as y'all did each thing. And what you know God's on yeah. is he opened the door, gave a sign, and then he also brought people. Like many people came to help you, may for a short time, may for a long time. So on the stage. That's right. And it was so amazing yeah. to watch. I go, God's on this thing. We the girlfriends want to go out there too. What kind of place could, like if I came with four, three friends, yeah. where would I stay? If I went and came with my husband. Yeah. Because I'm not a camping girl. I wear the clothes just for the... <laughs> so I like oh, that. That's right. That's right. Air, Where air would I stay? Okay. Well, everything's air conditioned here, Ellen. It's air conditioned really? and nice soft beds. So there's no... It's really not camping here. It's, it's okay. very nice. Um, okay. We have a lodge. So you can rent a room in the lodge. Okay. And then you, we also have houses. So, um, and we have the opportunity for a family to come and have their own retreat or a couple to come and have their own retreat. They would just stay at a house like you would on Airbnb. But the advantage is, is we have a chapel that you can go and pray. Um, yes. We have a lake where you can use our kayaks. And, um, and then we have all the nearby outdoor parks and hiking, great mm -hmm. hiking, great biking stuff here as well. So it's a great for a family retreat that you could do on your own. And we even have like a little activity bag that we leave in the houses for the families that rent it, that they could read through some of these prayer books or these activities if they want to, you know, just like some simple games they could do at dinner or something like that, just to sort of bond a little bit as a family, all optional, do whatever you want. And then of course, it's just great for couples. Couples can come and they can rent a room in our lodge okay. and they have access to everything here. And if you had a, a group of women, you guys could rent one of the houses. I think that would be a blast. And then you would yeah, kind of do your own little retreat. And it, even even you just spend time, like we would like the opportunity for people who are writers, um, songwriters, wow. painters, um, poets, whatever. You know, if you're working on a project like that, eventually you want to have some retreats for quilters, for knitters, for people like that. So that's just mm -hmm. an opportunity for people to come away and, spend some time in quiet that they want. 
Um, we also having like some serious more like studies as well here. Like we have one coming up. We're doing a study on the um, interior castles oh, by Saint like Therese of Alta um, Yeah. So you also um, do you have marriage retreats? Yeah. So, that, that, so that, that's kind of an, a retreat experience. Yeah. You have marriage ahead. retreats as well for that you leave have couples. I thought thought you have one in the summer a mar a marriage retreat. I don't know. Right, we have a marriage retreat. We do one in February, See? so that would be great for a couple that wanted to come to that. And we have a speaker, and then opportunities just to hang out with your spouse and, um, you know, enjoy each other and enjoy the area too. So, so just the typical retreat stuff, but we are in a really good location for it all, and we really want it to be accessible to people, and we really want to try to provide what what people need, which is really just that time away that merry time away just to work on relationships with whoever they're with, even just time by themselves. Like we want to offer some silent retreats as well coming up. So great. Well, see gals. So do you want to tell them how that well, I'm checking the time? Can you want to tell them how they can get in touch with you, where they could buy the book, how they can get a, like a information? I sure on your do. So, so, yeah. So please look at my website. Um, I'm sure there's, something whether you want a quilting retreat or you want something like a little more meaty or you just want time for yourself you're interested in the family camp um please sign up for our newsletter because you know we'll have the calendar on that and, and upcoming events and um you know so you can just sort of keep involved and you know and i don't i don't flood the i won't send you extra stuff I'm lucky to get the newsletter out so don't worry about that and i'm not great with social media i'm trying so you don't have to worry about that. But yes, yeah, so please sign up for a newsletter. It's, it's, it's heartridgeministries.com. So the place is called Heartridge, but the website's heartridgeministries.com. If you look Heartridge Retreats online, Carolinas, or, you know, we're in South Carolina, um, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. But just Heartridge, just like after the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That's so nice, so nice. Well, do you want an adventure? Do you want to? Do you want to go where you've never gone before? Contact Tammy. She answers all the questions, and um, I'm gonna let you have time for last word a minute to sum it up. But she she is she's always the pioneer. She starts what you know everybody goes after. So I'm gonna follow in Tammy's footsteps and do what she did because she has such great ideas. Why? She takes them in prayer and waits to the Lord. And when He gives the red light or the green light, red light stop, green light go. And when Sh St. Joseph shows up because this is here of St. Joseph. She knows that God's on it. But you have your own journey to take, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to follow her journey. Make one of your own. Start in prayer. Pause, listen, and then do whatever he tells you. So Tammy, sum us up. And I'll sum us up because I, I really do get complaints. I go, wow, that the show is great. <laughs> They're like, women are, are really busy, you know, and, some, and men, I guess, too. I have a, I have a, some old, I have a prayer chain of little intercessors and something give me feedback. And I go, well, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed meeting you, Tammy. Again, I, th I thank you for coming on, on board, but please sum us up to what you want them really to hear and tell me what 3125 is. That's, I thought that was funny. I saw it later in the show. What's Proverbs 3125 say? <laughs> it says, okay. How's yes, that? She's clothed in strength and dignity. That's, that's um, another many. And now, I don't know that I'm clothed in strength and dignity, but I tell you what. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's been like, um, it's just a, it's a great this proverbs 31 woman is a great encouragement for all women as well and that was always a very touching verse to me yes um you know before i converted to catholicism too i just love that and that's like the superwoman but yet <laughs> you know you know and it, it's not that god expects you to do all these things and you know well, but it's yeah. just like saint therese says but Teresa, you know, you're doing small things with great love. And that's my thing too. Um, yes. That's sort of her, what her I really super cape is her super cape is the grace of God. So, I mean, so, you know, superwoman, the cape is it, all in Christ. Okay, so to sum us up, what do you think that you want them to that's remember? Right. What do you want them to remember for the show? Like what things do you want them to remember? Um oh, I, I what I want them to remember is about Jesus's sacred heart. Okay, so the heart, the heart, the heart, and that he loves you so much and has so much planned for every single woman and mom out there. So much. 
for me, it was this beautiful retreat place. All right. And it seems like it's a lot, but trust me, it is a lot of work. And it's so frustrating sometimes. And I'm just tired. And sometimes I just want to cry. Like, why? I can't do this. <laughs> but, 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 but I know he loves me and he has this gift for me. But I want every woman to know that his heart burns for them individually and he cares for them and he's going to provide them wonderful things too. I mean, I know there's suffering involved because we've all been through suffering, but even through that suffering, he loves them so incredibly a lot. And my life's a witness to that. And I, and I hope other people will, you know, recognize that God's love burns for them individually, every single one. Thank you, Tammy. Tammy writes still, and she still speaks. So you call upon her. She'll come if God says yes, and then she'll <laughs> do whatever he tells her. But I do want to say that, that um, delight in the Lord, he'll give you the desire of your heart. But when you delight in the Lord, he is the desire of your heart. So all you want to do is be alone with him, hear his voice, and pour it out to the next person. Tammy's been an example to me, and I thank you again. And I know you all learned something today because you learned something from everybody, and everyone can learn something from you. So listen in prayer, and then go where he tells you and do what he says to do. Have a great day, Tammy, and rest, and, and then tell us what Thank you, Ellen. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. God bless you. I'll tell, my, I'll tell the whole world. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm gonna turn this off, and here thank we go. You. Thank Bye you. from Wild Mountains.